Welcome back to another episode of the GCN Tech Clinic where I help to solve your bike problem. How cool is that? And I'm lucky as well because I absolutely love getting stuck into reading your problems and trying to help solve them. So if you've got one, leave it down there in the comments section so I can help tackle it in a future episode. Anyway, let's crack on with the first question this week. And this one's from Christoph Moore, who says, hey John, love the tech clinic. That's a good one always to start with, Christoph, to get your question answered. Uh, I'm looking forward on receiving a pair of old Campagnolo Chamals. Guess where that idea came from? I can only guess. Anyway, uh, I'm quite unsure how to deal with the Campagnolo rear hub situation. What's the simplest way of fitting them onto a bike with Shimano 105 SC from the mid 90s? Christoph, you are a lucky lad getting hold of a pair of those Campagnolo Chamals because they're absolutely stunningly beautiful. I can't talk about them enough. Anyway, one way in which you could well get your gears working absolutely fine is if you're using down tube levers. Uh, from memory, those 105 SC had two modes, friction as well as indexed. Take them out of indexed, you're going old school, my friend. So you're not gonna have that nice click noise positive shifting. Instead, you're gonna have a little bit of guesswork and find out just what it was like to ride back in the 80s and 90s. So if you have got that mode, use that. Alternatively, if you're using the 105 SC STI levers, get this. This could take a little bit of hunting around, but there was a company out there called Marchisio. I've only just found out actually they no longer exist, but good news for you is they made cassettes that fitted onto a Campagnolo freehub body, but had Shimano spacing inside, and they also did it vice versa as well. It was an absolutely brilliant solution that many, many people out there were using for quite some time because the tolerances were big enough basically that you couldn't use one, one manufacturer's levers with another's cassette and vice versa. All of those issues. Have a look around online, Marchisio, and you should be able to get yourself sorted on those lovely wheels. Let me know how you get on, and I wanna see a picture of that too. Make sure you send it in. Next up is Samuel Lundqvist, and Samuel says, how do you keep your chain clean? When I've cleaned my chain and put lube on it, straight away it gets black and sticky, and then I see all these people riding around with a beautiful, clean, metal-looking chain. What am I doing wrong? Right then, keeping the chain clean. One of life's little mysteries that so far, only few of us have managed to actually really conquer. So, uh, preparation is absolutely key here. So whilst you're applying that chain loop, don't go wild spraying it here, there and everywhere. Simply start at the joining pin or that joining link and apply it to the drop there on the roller. A couple of drops say, and then the next roller, the next roller, the next roller, and so forth until you've done a complete revolution of the chain. When you've done that, back pedal it a few times, I don't know, say enough for 10 seconds, and then wipe away any excess from the chain. And then importantly here too, wipe away any excess from the jockey wheels and also the chain rings too, because they can get incredibly gunked up giving you that black chain. Now important too is to use a good quality chain lubricant because that's not gonna attract as much dirt and then using lubricant fit for purpose. So dry weather, dry lube. Wet weather, wet lube. Seems simple, right? Let me know how you get on with that one, Samuel, because yeah, a dirty chain is an absolute nightmare and it doesn't look cool, especially if you've got yourself a goldy looking chain. Next question this week comes from Protocol23. Uh, Hi John, I want to upgrade the Tiagra group set on my 2006 Specialized Alley to Shimano Ultegra R8000 or to Shimano 105. Currently my bike is only having a BB7420. Will the upgrade work? I need better suggestions. Budget is limited, but I hope you can help. Now, this will be a really, really nice upgrade on that bike. And that bike is gonna have a BSA, so a British threaded bottom bracket. As far as I know, Specialized didn't ever use an Italian thread or a press fit back then. So, yeah, it is gonna work. Now, some people out there will say, well, hang on, you're putting an 11-speed chain set onto a nine-speed bike. It's gonna work. I've never run into any problems with that, and I'm 99.9% .9 certain it's gonna work. You're gonna save yourself a lot of weight on that bike too by upgrading it that way. Now, Lee Jefferson, he's fancying some off-road action. Hi John, I'm looking to change my old aluminum road bike into a gravel bike. Could you tell me, is it possible to put 1134 on my Sora 9 speaker set without changing the rear derailleur? Thanks, Lee from South Wales. Right then, Lee, it does depend on the derailleur cage size you've got fitted at the moment, but 
I'm pretty sure that you are going to in fact need a Duralia hanger extender. What's that? Well, it simply drops your Duralia just by a couple of centimeters so it can accommodate more teeth on that rear cassette just by pushing it down a little bit. Uh, now you can pick them up just for a few pounds on eBay and that kind of thing. So have a little look around for one of those. Now, I hope you have thought about this issue as well because you are gonna, well, you're gonna be using it as a gravel bike so you're gonna be taking it off road. Therefore, you're gonna need bigger tires. So make sure that the frame and also the brakes can accommodate that extra volume of a tire. If you've got disc brakes, then it's not such an issue there with the actual clearance around the brake, but you're gonna to wanna to make sure it goes through the fork as well as the chain stays and seat stays okay. So just look into that first. Now, uh, Clifford Romina wants to know, is it okay to use chain lube on other parts of the bike apart from the chain? Say, for example, the joints of the brakes. Right then, Clifford, it is. I use chain lube, believe it or not, on gear cables, brake cables, as well as pivots on the brakes. So feel free and go ahead and do that. Obviously, on some uh, inner gear cables and brake cables, it's not necessarily advised because they do have Teflon liners in there and you don't want to go around mixing in different chain lubricants with that Teflon coated material. Uh, now, if you are putting them on your brakes, so on the springs and the joints and the little, where you've got little plastic bits and you've got a metal uh, braking arm on there, that kind of thing, you know what I mean if you look behind your brakes make sure that that chain loop doesn't drip down onto your wheels or braking surfaces at all because well let's face it that could end up pretty nasty indeed so just keep clear of any sidewalls but yeah use it to your heart's content next up this week is a question from gabe hart gabe says john i have a question about carbon wheels uh, I ride an S-Works Roubaix with Roval CLX carbon wheels. I ride very steep grades. Do I need to be concerned with generating heat on the wheels from braking? Lots of horror stories on the internet about this. Is it all just nonsense? Right then, Gabe, there are loads of scaremongers out there who love to get their 10 pence worth or 10 cents worth by writing something on a forum. Now, important to remember here is if you're buying wheels from one of the big brands out there, such as Roval, like you've mentioned, they have had so much R&D go into them. You know, ways to make heat uh, dissipate more effectively when you're braking, that kind of thing. So you don't need to worry about anything. Personally, I've ridden down the Alps, I've ridden down the Pyrenees, I've ridden down very steep hills, and I've braked really, really hard, and I've never had any problems with carbon clinchers or carbon tubulars. And the same can be said too from other GCM presenters when I asked around the office earlier on. So don't worry about it. Get yourself some decent carbon wheels, like what you've already got and you're perfectly fine or at least that is my take on it scaremongers on the internet it can be a scary place now Frizo Hugo is next up uh, I used a cassette with single sprockets so ones that were individually placed on not on a cluster of a spider that kind of thing uh, on the new Mavic wheels they've got and after 200 kilometers it's already started to slightly damage the free hub body is there a way to use this cassette without damaging the free hub or do I have to buy a cassette with all the sprockets on a spider? Hi Frizzy, this is actually a really, really common problem out there on nearly all good wheels because the free hub body is made of a softer material than the sprockets are themselves. So as you're generating torque, you're kind of working against that free hub body as you accelerate, as you pedal. But there's nothing to worry about here because like I say, nearly all wheels out there do suffer from that unless you're using an ultra heavy uh, free hub body or a titanium one, something like that, that's just not gonna get as damaged or sort of scored as easily. It's not necessarily gonna wear through uh, unless you use that for the rest of your life, I imagine, because I've got wheels that are many, many, many years old and they've never actually stripped all the way through. Something more important to think about though is how tight you've had your cassette done up because that could well affect how much scoring is actually being done. So use a torque wrench and make sure that lock ring is done up fully tight. And once the cassette is on there tightened up, it shouldn't rock at all on the actual free hub body. Next question is from Regina Blitz who says, I love you, John. That's the first time I've ever had that happen to me on this. Anyway, uh, I have a brand new bike with complete R8000 Ultegra group set. And after two or three rides, I noticed that the finish around the Ultegra logos on both the crank arms has distorted. The black finish around these areas now has some clear white kind of signs all across them. I noticed this after no more than 200 kilometers. 
I'm worried that I may have somehow warped the crank arms with the insane power I may have put through them, but the truth is I'm a very low power cyclist. So although this would be flattering, I find it unlikely and the bike is too new for this to be an age related issue. Hopefully this is just normal flex, right? Any insight? Right then, Regina, thanks for the love. Uh, right, the logos and the lines on those cranks, what could it be? Well, maybe, just maybe, as you're pedaling, your shoes or your overshoes are very slightly rubbing on the crank arms and you don't even notice it because it's a really, really faint rubbing motion. Particularly if you're using overshoes, you wouldn't necessarily feel it. So that could well be rubbing away those logos slightly. Um, now that's certainly what I think it could well be. If they are looking damaged though, take it to a shop and actually get them to check in case that's for some reason something drastic has actually gone wrong. Alternatively, like you say, well, blame it on your power, if anything. Just say, you know, you're flexing this bike like nobody's business and you're, well, getting wattage bazookas left, right and centre. P.S. I love you too. Final question this week comes from Emiliano Martinez and says, I have a 2018 Giant TCR Advanced Zero. Currently, I'm running the Shimano Ultegra R8050 and was wondering if it's possible to piece together a way to convert from rim brakes to disc brakes. If so, what will I need to make it happen? Thanks for the help. Right then, Emiliano, you are going to need, first of all, a frame to fit those disc brakes onto. Then you're going to need some new levers and also the calipers. And then also you're going to need some new wheels as well that you can fit those disc uh, rotors onto. So all in all, it's not as straightforward as you may well think, and it could well cost you a fair bit too. So just bear all of those things in mind. And uh, yeah, let us know how you get on with that. I'm intrigued as well to know why or what is your reason for going from rim to disc. But yeah, go for it if you've got the budget, of course. Now, I do hope that I've been able to answer your question this week in the GCN Tech Clinic. If not, you know what to do, leave it for me down there in the comments and I'll do my best to answer it in a coming episode. As ever as well, like and share this video with your friends, give it a thumbs up, especially if a mate of yours has got one of these problems. Now, it's hopefully solved for them. And remember as well to check out the GCN shop at shop.globalcyclingnetwork.com. We've got riding kit, casual kit, we've got little hats, we've got beer, bottle openers, we've got pizza cutters, you name it, hopefully we've got it. And now for another great video, this time a maintenance video, click just down here, there. <laughs>